are we looking at today? Got a bunch of stuff that came in from Jared over at Neves Knives. He sent me a whole big package. There's too much, way too much to do in here in one sitting. So we're gonna break this up into like three knives each and we're gonna split it into three parts. I'm probably not gonna film all of it today because it's Saturday and I wanna spend some time with my family. So we're gonna get into this. We're gonna start looking at these knives. I hope you guys know what time it is because it's time to turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. Like I said, we're gonna look at these three knives at a time. We're gonna give each knife about three minutes. That's about a good amount of time for you to kind of get a good first impressions of knives. I only opened one of these knives before we, before we started looking at these. So these are all gonna be a surprise to me. So let's go ahead and let's get these out of the way and crack into eeny, meeny, miny, Melvin. Let's go ahead and open this one up, take a quick look at what's inside. This is the Kaiser T1. Okay, I haven't seen this before. Let's take a look. Nice cases. Jared always sends stuff in nice cases. Ooh, a little stiff. All right. Uh, so we're looking at here 154 cm. Nice drop point blade. I'm not a fan of the pocket clip already. I can I can really feel. Well, that's mainly because I cut myself. <laughs> I cut myself yesterday doing something, um, and that sits right on that. But uh, yeah, actually, that's nice and snappy. Nice good micarta. It's got a ridge, so it's. It's not completely, like there's a ridge here that you can't really see too well, but you can definitely feel it. I like that. It gives it a nice tactile feel. It real, feels really good in hand. Fingers drop into it. Let's take a look at the blade. Nice drop point blade. Jared's sending me dirty knives. Come on, man. You've got 100,000 subscribers and you're sending me dirty knives, brother. Um, centering, pretty good. Nice micarta. This looks like a pretty, like, this looks like a pretty good budget showing. Action on it's pretty diff but it the action pops so pocket clip pocket clip wiggles a little bit but that's a nice looking micarta that would if you oiled this i bet this would be great i'm gonna maybe oil this and then wash them before i send it to jared um nice half backspacer if you like a lanyard hole you got a lanyard hole is it reversible it is not reversible what i say 154 cm on the steel Let's see here Feels like it comes down relatively thin. It's obviously Jared has sharpened this. So yeah, a nice keen edge on that. 154CM takes a pretty keen edge. Let's see. How's it? Yeah, the action's really smooth. The action's really smooth. It's just, I think it's just the position I got my hand in. It feels kind of stiff. Pops open with authority. Let's see. Nice access to the lock bar so far. I like, I've gotten to where I like some of these liner locks. Yeah, you got good access to that lock bar. It's not jumped, it's not heavily sharpened, or it's not heavily jumped or sharp. Hang on a second, I got a knife that's gonna show you kind of what I was talking about uh, before in other knives that I don't like. Actually, it's right here. I don't even have to cut. Um, I, I'm talking about access to the lock bar. I love this knife. However, there is no extra access to that lock bar. It's very tight, I can't really get in there. So it's not any thicker or any thinner but yet I have better access to that because that's been scalloped out. Now I don't like the idea of putting jimping on it. So I like the fact they didn't jimp it. Nice clean hardware. There's no sharp spots on it. It's all nice and rounded and it's set good. The micarta on this looks really good. It's, it's like a charcoal color almost. I'm digging that. I like this a lot. This is, this is a good, this would be a good, good budget knife. It feels really good in hand. Um, yeah, I'm not getting any hot spots, not getting anything. Action's really good. So there's your first one. So uh, the Kaiser T1 in 154 cm. I like that. That's not a bad. That's not a bad little knife. What is next? What is next? This is like Christmas, guys. It's like opening Christmas presents. What is this? The okay. Is this the Gonzo? I've not. I, okay, I typically. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. I'm not a fan of Gonzo knives. So this is the. Oh, Jared. I don't think this is. I know what this is. This is the Adam Adamanti. I wonder if he sent me more than one. Ganzo. Um, because this is not the F921. This is Adamanti. I've seen a video about this. So um, apparently these are in-house designs. These are actually in-house designs. They're not knockoffs. Now, a lot of people say, oh, we shouldn't get a Ganzo. I'm, I'm 
about this too, like ripping off, but I also know there has to be a redemption arc for someone who has done something that's not great. Anzo knives always had good action, um, but a lot of them were knockoffs. This is the Adamanti. I've seen this, this is the Adamanti. It's not the, the 921. Um, nice blade shape on this. Um, full frame lock. Pocket clip is unusual, but how stiff is it? Not bad, let's get this out of my pocket real quick and see how it is in track pants. Okay, so it's early in the morning, I'm wearing track pants, so the, the tension on it's not too bad, I don't think this would walk. I like that blade shape though, that's a nice blade shape. I'm a sucker for a good, attractive blade with a well done swedge, this seems to be pretty even. Uh, the tip may be a little asymmetrical. Come on, Jared. Did you put it now? Jared didn't sharpen this. So, um, yeah, the tip is a little asymmetrical on the grind, but overall, it's not bad. It's not too heavy. It's not too thick. Is that a steel lock? I can't tell if it's a steel lock or if it's titanium. I don't know yet. Steel lock bar. So, um, you know, it is a little bit heavier, but you're also, you know, probably pretty budget. Um, hardware looks pretty good. The G10 is pretty nice. It does have, it has a glass breaker, but it's not real sharp. It's got the ceramic ball in it looks like it's removable that's what holds your pocket clip in so you could reverse this pocket clip pretty easily i think well no you can't because it's not cut out on that side that's kind of sad this this type of uh, pocket clip um pocket clip system that the that this holds it in you could have easily made this reversible because it's uh only got that one screw that's holding it in um no need for a lock bar insert really because it's steel detent ball i'm trying to figure out what is does it have a steel what am I looking at here? Why is this magnetic yet has its own lock bar insert? Hmm. wonder if they're just doing it because it's hardened and it's not. So we'll figure this all out. Like I said, this is just me looking at these knives. Comfortable in hand, good amount of jimping. Interesting. I'm just giving this a really good scrutiny because like, I'm interested because I haven't seen a Ganzo for a long time because they were... They were, in my opinion, just stealing designs. But like I said, I'm okay with I'm okay with the redemption arc if you've stopped doing things that are nasty. And yeah, it's an attractive knife. I'm not gonna lie, it's a nice looking knife. Pretty comfortable. All right, guys. So there you go. That is the Ganzo, not the FH921. It is the Adamanti. So there you go, guys. There's number two. So now I haven't opened these, so I don't know, but like, I would like to say that this is a Vivi, but knowing Jared, he just reutilized cases because it's the same thing I do. So let's open this up and take a look. Oh, 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 oh. This is that Vols that Vosteed Nightshade. I've been trying to get him to send me this knife for a while. Dude, that is, that is attractive. That is attractive. And like I said, guys, I don't know price point or anything on these, any of these knives. So if you're going to be in the comments and be like, oh, what's it cost? What's the price on that? I don't know because this is truly, truly unboxing first impressions. Okay, let's see. That's, that's clean. That's some clean machining. There's a little bit of a high spot right there. Pocket clip. I mean, companies, come on, guys. You could find better pocket clips. Don't just go with the, the plain Jane pocket clips. Do something interesting with your knives. Don't make an attractive knife and then put a garbage pocket clip on it. Um, let's see here. In hand? It's okay. I'm not going to complain about the pocket clip too much anymore. It puts it, that, that, ra that radius puts it in a spot where it's not bad at all. Guys, that is so comfortable. I'm curious to how this cuts. Action on this. Super smooth. Look at that. Just walks its way home. Copper and micarta. That is attractive micarta. I typically don't like micarta if it's been polished. I'd rather have the rough micarta and then let it pick up its own patina with pocket or with with hand oils. But that is, I'm not gonna lie, that is that's attractive. Let's see, a little bit of weight reduction on the liners on both sides to keep your weight down. It's not heavy. It's got a nice weight. Okay, it's got a good pivot point where the weight is a little bit forward. Leaf blade with it being. Down. I like the knives that go that have a tendency to drop down. They align you with your cut pretty well. I'm pretty sure that you'd be able to cut real well with this like that. Nice thin blade. What's the steel on this? I didn't even look. Is there a steel marked on it? M390. Okay. M390. I'm good with that. I like M390. Liner locks. You don't have... Here's the thing about line, I love about liner locks with these bolsters. I mentioned it about the uh, Kaiser Graziosa. You don't lose anything. If this was a frame lock... 
and it came down, I'd have a, a spot where I have that to deal with. I've really gotten to where I'm liking a lot of liner locks because it's a smooth feel in hand. So when you open the knife, you don't lose anything. It feels the same. It feels the same as it does. A little bit of jimping on that lock bar. I usually don't think you need much jimping on that, but it's pretty soft, pretty good access to the lock bar. That copper, I'm pretty sure would patina over time pretty well. Attractive hardware, it's a single-sided pivot. So, I mean, I imagine if you needed to, to loosen this, that it wouldn't be a problem. You could probably get something on there. You'd probably get a tool on there because it's got nice facets. I like this a lot. I really like this a lot. I've already hit my three minutes and I haven't, that was easy. Um, jumping on the spine, pretty good. We're gonna go a little bit long on this one because I was gushing out. I really like this. This is a unique, unique design. Um, it's like a, it's like a Kukri kind of, so, you know, you get a lot of cutting power with that. I don't know. We're going to see, this is going to be one, this is going to be one that's, I'm going to probably get that in my pocket soon. You guys are probably going to get a first day carry on a Saturday soon on this. So guys, I don't want to make this any longer. We already did two other knives. They were three minutes each. I like the three minute format. I think it's going to give us a little bit more time to look at the knife and it's not going to hold us to something that's going to keep the videos. It's going to keep the videos a little shorter so you guys can can digest them a little easier and not have to look at an 18, 20 minute video. So, all right, guys, let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. So there you go, guys. Like I said, I broke, I'm going to break this up into sections of three. That way each knife gets a little bit more time. If I try to do it all, I just, I think I don't give them a fair first impression. So I'm trying to give each knife like three minutes each in this video. So you're going to get three knives at three minutes each. And then I'm going to pull those knives aside so I can start doing stuff with them. So I'm trying to change up the format a little bit. If you guys watch Jared on Everyday City Carry uh, on his podcast, you know that these are the things that Jared and I talk about. Um, I've said before I talk with Jared and it seems to be working and people like the content. So if you do like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But please, in the comment section, try to tell me why I can't change that content. If you don't tell me what you do and don't like, um, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Make sure you've got notifications turned on on your device so that bell icon actually works. And those are the best ways to support a channel. But if you do want to support the channel financially, I have a, I have a handful of ways down in the description below. I have a membership that gets you in on a bunch of different benefits based on tier. Uh, everyone gets my, gets access to the Gilded server. Everyone saves $5 off of my sharpening service. And if you're a premium tier member, you have access to a playlist that has my sharpening tutorials that I've built and made only for those members. Uh, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below. Anything you purchase with affiliate link, I get a little bit at checkout and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And the final way is I have a merchandise store, Ember Shirt Co. I've set up a coupon code that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. That coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all in word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. If you send me a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put it in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.